Do you know that the number one fear in America is public speaking? The number two fear in America is running out of money in retirement. People are very concerned about running out of money in retirement. And what the really funny part is, is that most people don't even know what they really want in retirement. They've got an idea, but they don't have a really solid idea of what that means. So let me just tell you what it is you want in retirement. You want to live the lifestyle you become accustomed to, adjusted for taxes and inflation, out beyond yours and your spouse's life expectancy, and then your goal is to pass your money on in the most tax-favored way possible to your children. Now, in order to retire, you must have one thing, and that one thing is a paycheck. Now, in the accumulation stage of your life, you'll be over here and you're just trying to get the best rate of return that you can possibly get so that you, when you reach my world, which is preservation and distribution, you don't run out of money. Now, when you get to preservation and distribution, you're going to have what are called known incomes. Your known incomes will be things like Social Security, pension, if you're lucky enough to have one, and then possibly some rentals. And then you're going to have a need, and that's going to be up here. And in between there, you're going to have a gap. Now, that gap is going to have to be filled by your IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, 457, TSP accounts, gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, annuities, CDs, whatever it was that you managed to save. Now, let's just pretend for one second that you've done very well. You've managed to put away $2 million in those accounts. So if we take a look at this over here, you can see if we've got $2 million in assets, we're going to retire it at the age of 65. We're going to use a life expectancy of 90. Now, remember, you're, you're basing this on two lives, on not only yourself, but on your spouse. And it is a fact that the spouse, generally the female of the, of the couple, will outlive the male of the couple, and generally by 10, 15 years. So we need to be actually doing the planning a little longer. But for this scenario, we're only going to plan out to age 90. Typically, I would use the age 100. We're going to use a, a commonly known rule called the 4% rule. Now, based on the 4% rule, I know you have about an 87% chance of actually not running out of money in retirement. And that's fair. Okay. We're going to use an inflation of 3%, and I'm going to use the S&P 500 starting in the year 2000. Now, there's a reason why I use the S&P starting in the year 2000, and the reason for that is, is because that's going to give us some of the best times in the market and some of the worst times in the market throughout history. And I think it's important to look at it that way going forward because you don't want to just be looking at all roses, okay? So if we look here and we look at the accumulation years, you can see that starting out here at age 39 and accumulating this $2 million, by the time we get out here to age 64 to retire, we have $2 million. Now here's an interesting thing. We look through here, you can see that we've got negative 10.14, 13.04, 23. We've got returns of 26. Another loss of 38, returns of 23, 20, 12, 13, 29. We have, we're all over the board. Well, here's the interesting point. In the accumulation years, it doesn't really matter what order those, those losses come or those gains come because no matter how we shuffle this, you can see here, no matter how we shuffle it, when we're turning this around, and we move these into different orders over here, we still end up with $2 million. Check it out looking like this, okay? We shuffle it, we shuffle it, we shuffle it. No matter how we shuffle it, by the time we get to our accumulation stage, we still end up with $2 million. Now, that's great. And, and, and you said we've done this great job of getting in this accumulation done, but now we are going to arrive into our distribution years. And in our distribution and preservation years, the difference that takes place now is that we no longer are going to be able to count on our job. So now we've got to have an income. We need money coming out of this account over here. So we're going to use that 4% rule. And then what we're going to do is every year we're going to inflate that by 3% because we're going to need 3% more to live. So you can see over here, out of our $2 million, we take out $80,000.
And the following year, 82,400 and 84,872. And we simply inflate that by, by 3% going forward. Now, using those returns in the S&P from 2000 going forward, you can see, using a 4% rule, that we make it all the way out here to age 82. And at age 82, we run out of money. Well, I don't know about you, but when I get to retirement, I want to make sure that I have an income stream that I can't outlive. I'm guaranteed to not run out of money no matter what happens. I don't mind running out of money, but I definitely don't want to run out of income. I need that paycheck in order to live the lifestyle I've become accustomed to. Now, check this out. If I change the order by which these re returns come. So if I go up here and right now I have three negative years here and I'm going to go ahead and shuffle those returns over here on the right. So watch what happens when I shuffle them. So now I've got four negative years. Well, with four negative years, I'm running out of money at 78. But if I change that around and, and I, I go ahead and, I, and I've got all five negative years and I'm running out of money by age 77, I go here, I take all six negative years and put it in there. I'm running out of money by age 76. And now I'm going to start getting a little bit more positive here. So I'll, I'll move it around here. And now I've got two positive years here and then four or five negative years here. And I'm making it out to age 80. Now, if we look at this on a graph side, you can see over here that we run out here at 79 on this side, and over here we run out at 81. So let's just shuffle this around a few times. You can see that it's all over the place. In some places, I make it all the way out to age 90 before I run out of money, and even beyond, depending upon where I go. But I can shuffle this a thousand times, and I'm going to get all kinds of different scenarios. But the question I would have for you is, is really, at the end of the day, do you want if income or do you want guaranteed income? You see, if income is going to be based on the fact that, well, if I just sit here and I play what I've always been doing, I am not going to have a problem. So let me illustrate this with just a million dollars. And let's just say that for the sake of argument that I need to take out that 4% every year. Well, if I've got a million dollars here and I have to take out 4% and all I do is make 4%, life is good. 4% life is good. Now, don't forget about inflation, but let's say let's keep taking 40000 And in one year, the market loses 20%. Well, you say my million dollars would go to 800000 But what you're forgetting is, is I still got to take the forty. So I'm now actually at seven sixty. And now I'm on a downhill slide and I'm never coming back. Now, it is possible to make sure that you have secure incomes in life. So when you move to this distribution and preservation stage of your life, it becomes more and more important to start removing some of these risks from your future. If you don't, you stand the chance of running out of money in your lifetime. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below and remember to live like you're going to die tomorrow and plan like you're going to live forever because you just might. Feel free to reach out to us at any time. Keep smiling and I look forward to seeing you very soon.